Okay, this is the boot camp remediation for factory. Hopefully you've had a chance to download the worksheet. And what I'll be doing is walking you through the first question on the factoring diamond style problems. And then the other one that's on the lower part here that says factoring other. So if you can have the worksheet out first, look at the problem. If you think you already know how to do it, try to attempt it first and then watch the video. Or continue to watch and then hopefully you'll have a better sense of what to do. There are three things that you should ask yourself when you're beginning to factor. Uh, first of all, do you have common factors? The second thing you should look at is do you have a difference of squares? And then the third thing is if you don't have either of those first two, then check to see if you have a generic rectangle and diamond problem, and then uh, move on from there. So hopefully then these things mean, make sense to you. When we talk about common factors, we're talking about numbers or factors that divide into all three of the terms. In this case, there aren't any. And also for common letters, if there's a common letter in all those, that's in all three terms, take that, that out as well. So since this case in the first one here does not have common factors, then we'll move down the list. It's not a difference of squares. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. And then last of all, since it is a generic rectangle, generic rectangle and diamond problem, let's look at how we do that. So now let's look at how we accomplish, let's set a little more detail here, uh, the question that says uh, 3p squared minus 2p minus 5. Since it is a diamond problem, we're going to then make a box in the diamond, okay, a generic rectangle and diamond. The way you always start these out is you put the uh, first term right here in the first upper, right, upper left corner of the box. That'll be your 3p squared. The bottom right corner will be your minus 5. The next step then is to take the diagonal of those two and make a product of those two and put them in the top of the diamond, which is the next part. So I'm going to multiply those together, and then we're going to put the answer right here, which then gives you negative 15p squared. Again, remember to put the letters with it. Uh, moving on from here then, we also want to then figure out the, the bottom part of the diamond part, part of the problem, which is this middle term. This middle term, you make sure you always take with it the uh, operation to the left of it. In this case, it's a negative 2p. So we'll put the negative 2p down below. Once you have those two things, we're asking ourselves what two things multiply to give you the top expression, and what two things add to give you the, the bottom expression. In this case here, we have two things that would then turn out to be negative 5p and positive 3p. Then from there, you're going to take these two things and bring them over to the, to the generic rectangle. So if I put those in here, then I'll have a negative 5p here, and I'll have a positive 3p here. Now the last part of this is just basically figuring out the dimensions of, dimensions of the generic rectangle. So what you have to do, first of all, is look at one of the rows of the columns and say what's common. Well, there's a common 3 and a p that's in this whole entire first row. So put a 3p on the outside, then look at what the expression is in that corner. Since we have 3p squared, you have to have a 1p at the top. And if you put a 3p here, what do you have to multiply 3p, 3p by to get 3p in the box? Well, that would have to be a 1. So we'll put p plus 1 there. And then on the bottom side here, we have a, a p times what will give you negative 5p, and that would have to be negative 5. So now once you have those two things, you're basically done with the problem except for writing it in the factored form, and that would be p plus 1 times uh, 3p minus 5. There are two ways now you can check your answer. One easy way to check your answer is to uh, multiply the problem out, but that's basically the generic rectangle that you're looking at. But if you still don't have a lot of confidence in that answer that you just wrote, use your calculator. Your calculator can also work if you go to the graphing side of it, type in the original problem that you had in the first equation, type your answer in the second equation, and if you just press second graph, check to make sure your two tables are the same, and if that happens, then you know also for sure that your answer is correct. I should hopefully give you enough confidence then when factoring the diamond problems. All right, moving on. You might have another question like number three, so look at your worksheet now and look at number three, and I'll walk you through that one next. So the first thing you want to ask when you get to number three, which is this question right here, do we have do we have any common factors? And the answer is no. There is not a number that divides into both of these two. The next question you want to ask yourself is, do we have a difference of squares? And the next question you might have is, well, what is the difference of squares? Well, in math, we talk about the word difference, meaning subtraction. So we think of product for multiplication, sum for addition, and we think of quotient for division. But when we say difference in math, we're talking about subtraction. So if we say if you have a difference of squares, we're saying, do you have a subtraction of squares? Now, squares, we're also talking about terms that you can square root nicely, meaning like the square root of 4, the square root of 9, and so on. So some other examples are 36, 49, and even 9, sorry, a little tough there, uh, 
36, 49, and 9x squared. So like the example of this one, then if you square root 9x squared, you get 3x. So in this problem here, we have 16n squared. That square roots nicely. And 9 also square roots nicely. And if you have two terms that you had a difference of, again, subtraction, only subtraction, then you can write it in a form of two binomials, one with a plus and one with a minus, where you have the square roots of each of those terms. And that would then give you uh, the answer uh, 4n plus 3 and 4n minus 3. Now, some of you are not going to always be this sharp and catch the fact that we have a difference of squares. So if you don't have that confidence, we can go on to another option, option 2, which would be to try to do a generic rectangle. So if you take that same problem and try to do a box and diamond with that, I'll move this whole thing down now and do the same problem again, option 2, and if you can't catch the fact that it's, that it's a... Uh, that it's a difference of squares, you can still fill in the problem. This still works out as your first term. This works out as your last term. So you're going to put your 16n squared here, and then you're going to put in your um, you're going to put in your negative 9 here, and then you're going to put in uh, the answer to 16 times 16 times 9. And what do you get? Hopefully you get that answer, and you'll have 144 n squared negative. And then down below, you have to have the answer f of 0. So then when you have that, then you're going to ask yourself, well, what two things multiply to give you the top term? What two things add to give you the bottom term? In this case here, the answer would have to be positive 12 and negative 12 n. Okay? Then we'll take these two answers here, move them over to our generic rectangle, putting our 12 n here. It doesn't matter which side you put them on. We'll put our negative 12 n, whoops, 12 n here. And then you're going to basically fill in the dimensions, and you're also done with that as well. So in this case here, there's a common n and a common factor of 4. So we'll put 4n here, which then forces the 4n to go here. And then if you fill in the whole thing, then across here, this has to be a minus 3. And this one also here has to be a positive 3. So again, this will then factor out to give you uh, 4n minus 3 and 4n plus 3. And again, if you don't have confidence in that solution, and you want to check to make sure for sure that's right, put in your calculator, put the original problem in your calculator, put that in your calculator for the second equation, and just check the tables and verify that the tables are the same. Good luck, and hopefully this video helps you in factoring uh, diamond or uh, generic rectangle and diamond problems and also differences of squares.